If you have ever put in an insane amount of time organizing a space only to have it go right back to where it was, then today's video is for you. We're going to be talking about craft room habits you need to break, but these can be applied to your entire house. Let's get started. Hello, I'm Noreen Berg. Welcome to The Crafty Organizer, where I love bringing you ideas for organizing, decluttering, upcycling, DIYs, and anything crafty. Some of these tips that I'm going to bring you today I have shared before, but this is a great chance to refresh, go over them again, or bring you something new that you haven't heard of. So here are 10 of my best habits that you need to break to keep your areas organized as well as a bonus. Let's start off with the first tip. Buying something to get organized. We've all been in the situation where you're walking down an aisle, you see some containers and you think, that item is going to help me get organized. So you grab it, you take it home, and then you start looking at your things that are out going, what should I put in here? This is so easy to do, especially when you're walking through the Dollar Tree or the container store and you see all these amazing cute little drawers. But there's a better way to do this. The first step, even though it seems daunting, is focus on one set area, whether it's your desk, your counters, your bathroom cabinet, and start getting all of those likes with likes. Get out some temporary bags, boxes, bins, something that can contain your items temporarily until you get through your entire space and have all of the similar items together. Once you've done this, it gives you the opportunity to weed out any duplicates or things that you no longer need or want. And then you'll know what types of organizers and containers you'll need to fit the items you have. So even though it's tempting to buy that really cute organizer, hold off until you know exactly what's going to go into it because oftentimes the items that we buy will not fit the collection that we have. The next item that many of us are guilty of is micro-organizing. What the heck does that mean? Micro-organizing is once again when you have those containers or bags and each time you bring something new into your home, you put it in that container and set it aside so that you can find it again. But what ends up happening is we now have hundreds of little containers spread out everywhere because we've micro-organized. So what we need to do once again is step back Get all of those likes with likes and have a high level of things together. Like glues, you would have one container with every type of adhesive and then with inside of that you could break them down with fabric glues, hot glues, tapes, much like when you're walking through the grocery store. You would go to the grocery store for your food items. Then you would go, say, down to the canned food items. You would go specifically to vegetables or fruit. You would go to the type of fruit or vegetable you want. You would then find that they're broken down by brand. And then you would even see that they have the additives of salt or no salt, syrup or no syrup. Your craft room or whatever area you're organizing is going to be the same way. So get that high level or that upper category of things together in in one space and then you could subdivide down from there. Here's an example of a client I got to work with. They had this amazing built-in put in their little dining area so that they could have a dedicated craft space. But what was happening is each time they brought something into their craft space, they were creating a container for it, which meant that they couldn't find the things when they wanted them. All we did was go through and put likes with likes, and then we created zones in their area, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. We ended up not getting rid of anything, but by getting all of those categories together, we were able to utilize larger containers and subdivide things inside of these containers. And we also created zones, which segues perfectly. A mistake so many people make is not having zones in their space. I've talked about zones before or the bullseye method where what you use the most is in your immediate sitting area. Those things that you use less often are on the outskirts and those things that you seldom use are on the outermost areas. Most of you are already doing this and you don't even realize it. In your kitchen, you've got a designated space for pots, 
pans, your pantries, your utensil items. In the example of that client's room, we were able to create zones for her yarns and textiles, fabrics and notions, her mixed media items, paints, ribbons, tools. What this effectively does is when you need something, even if you don't remember where it's at, you can go to the zone and pretty much identify where it is within that space. Again, if it's a frequently used tool, have it on a pegboard or on a caddy that's really close to where you sit. But those other items, by having it with that like category, in the case of paints, if you're looking for a paintbrush, chances are it's going to be with your paints. And if you have them bundled together, you can easily find the correct sized brush that you need. Likewise, if you're looking for knitting needles, it's probably going to be with your yarn, unless it's a frequently used item, and then have it right outside. This next tip is one of my favorites. Be your own personal assistant. What does that mean? Well, so often when we have something extra or if we're not sure where to put it, we end up finding a space where it fits, which results in hours of frustrating search time trying to locate that item again or trying to think, where on earth would I have put it? I make a note. Here's an example. On my tacky glue, I have a note saying, I have extras in my box. My box means my adhesive box. When I peek inside my adhesive box, yep, I have two more tacky glues as a backup. I do this on my computer laptop as well. I have a note telling me right where my charger is because I have my laptop tucked in a narrow space, but my charger doesn't fit near it. By leaving myself a note of where my charger is, I don't waste time searching and I don't have to commit that to memory space. This works great when you're packing up seasonal items as well of where something is or that you got rid of it. I have done that so many times where I'm on the fence about getting rid of something, I do decide to donate it, and the next year I'm looking for it. So I've started keeping a list of what I've donated so that I don't end up driving myself crazy looking for something that I opted to donate. <laughs> Spreading things out. Whenever possible, use the vertical space that you have, whether you've got binders on a shelf, or if you're using bookcases to store your things in boxes and bins, or if you're utilizing a pegboard for your storage. Getting these things up means that your surface spaces are available for you to do whatever project you're ready to tackle. Another option, if you're short on vertical space, create one of the storage racks that I've put together, either by using a rolling storage cart or making this DIY storage rack that has double-sided storage. I've got videos on both of those and they're in my description below. This next one is an oldie but a goodie, but it's not using the five gallon method. I've mentioned before that if you have a five gallon bucket, you cannot fit more than five gallons of water in there, no matter how hard you try. The same goes with your spaces. Whether you wanna call it the one in, one out rule, you have a limited amount of space for something. Setting up a set amount of what can go in that space means that you'll never overwhelm it and allow things to filter into the rest of your space. So whether you decide you can only have 40 books, 20 jackets, 30 bowls, whatever the item is, setting that limit and then keeping within those boundaries means you'll never overwhelm your space again and stay on top of your clutter. This next one is the hardest one for me personally, and that's leaving your space as is. I am notorious for pulling out things and doing a project and then getting pulled away. And then I come back into my space and I have to do something else. So I end up shoving things to the side, pulling out more supplies, and it just becomes complete and utter chaos. And that's when I want to shut my door and not go back in. So when you're sitting down, set a timer so that if you know you can only craft for an hour, set the timer for 45 minutes so that you have time to clean up. And if you know the project's going to take longer, then that's segues perfectly into the next tip. Project planning. Now there are many names for this one, whether you call them UFOs for unfinished opportunities, whips, which is works in progress, or just things I gotta do. Having a system set up for putting these away temporarily is really going to make the difference between chaos in your space and success. I use cookie sheets from the Dollar Tree. 
By doing this, I can have them set on a shelf and one is just inverted on top of the other with some binder sheets. This conceals the projects inside and gives a lot of space on the inside. I can also use a marker, a dry erase marker, or some sort of wax crayon and write on the outside. This means my projects that are in progress are always easy to find, identified, and everything I need for it is contained inside. No more searching. I do not include my major tools though. So scissors, crafting knives, those always go right back on my pegboard so I don't have to search for them. But everything else I was using for that project is easy to pull back out when I'm ready, saving me tons of time. How many of us have those mystery things that are in existence in our craft room? We've had it, we don't know how long, we just know we haven't used it. We might use it though, so we put it back on the shelf. Here's a tip, write the date on that object. What this will do is conclusively tell you how long you've been holding onto it with the intention of using it. If it's been a year, either pull it into the forefront of your planning so that you use it in the next month or so, or let it go. Here's an example of an item that I got last February and I've been meaning to use it. If I do not use it by December, I have to let it go. Likewise with these sticker makers, you can tell by the dust, I have not touched these for a long time. I'm going to donate two of them and only keep one, which leads me perfectly into the next topic. Scheduling time to organize your space is just as important as all of these other tips that we're making. This allows you to go through your categories again, make sure you're not micro-organizing. It allows you to peek inside and make sure that all of your supplies are being used and just gives you that overall sense of what you actually have in your space. And again, this can be used in the kitchen, the garage, the bathroom, your bedroom closet, but definitely in your crafting space so that you know which items you're using and it might remind you of what you have so that when you are crafting, you know exactly what you have in your arsenal so that you can use up those supplies. So now it's time for our bonus tip, over buying. I know, I know, how can you not do this with every crafting channel saying, hurry, buy these before they're gone. But remember that five gallon bucket rule? Do the same thing when it comes to having projects to work on in the future. I love seeing something and thinking, oh, I could do something cool with this and bringing it home. Except that I do that so much that now my space is overwhelmed with these potential someday projects. So set a designated area, whether it's a shelf, a bin, a tote, keep it within that space write the date on the bottom and go through it frequently. If you've had it more than six to 12 months, consider letting it go or pull it out and plan to make something with that item. If you have room in there and you go shopping and you know you can put it in that bin, enjoy getting some new items. But if it's full, as hard as it is, you have to say no to those new things. Otherwise what happens is it starts going into the overflow areas throughout your space and your craft area or kitchen or whatever else you're shopping for will get overrun again. How many of these were new to you or are you already a pro using all of these techniques in your daily organizing? And again, these tips are not exclusive for your craft room. If you're struggling with an area of your home, pull back, see if you're micro organizing, see if things are not broken down into likes with likes, or perhaps you've got them broken down but you're not using zones. And maybe you might have to do these a little bit at a time, but I promise following these will click everything into place. Thank you so much for watching today's video. As always, thank you to my patrons who allow me to make these videos without their support. I don't know how I would get these done. So patrons, thank you very much. If you'd like to see your name on that list, that information is in the description below for joining my Patreon. Thank you to you for watching liking, subscribing, and leaving comments. I love reading through them. I try and answer each and every one, so if you've never commented before, leave me a quick hello and I will answer right back. I will see you guys in just a few days for our next video. Bye.